And we're back with more of the Pope on film. Party! Yes. If you're like me, you're no doubt a big fan of this podcast, The Pope on Film. I mean, who isn't really nowadays? It's sweeping the nation. It's uh, roombaing the nation. But only the real fans, the true hardcore, ride or die fans of this podcast, only they would know. The two basic, undeniably really real and in no way made up on the spot facts about the both of us, you and I, America's cutest podcasting couple, Bunny and Mei Lin. Uh, now, the first fact, which is about you, Bunny, yes. is the fact that when you are not recording the podcast, you are a celebrated chef. Not a lot of people know this about you. So tell us, Bunny, what makes you such a celebrated Michelin-rated chef? Well, first, uh, I slept with Aja Argento. Of uh, course. So that was that was a big leap in chefdom. Uh, and what's really important in uh, there are a few things that are important in being a successful chef. Okay, you really need to have some sort of a niche to operate in. Okay, so. You know, you got you, Emerald always had, had the bam, you know, and yeah. like just putting way too much garlic into shit, you know. Uh, yeah. Anthony Bourdain was pro- professionally depressed, you know, things like that. Uh, my, I, me, everything I make is either out of spam or roadkill. Nice. So that is the particular area, you know, I. Like like many many dishes, you know that starts with how poor people need to deal with leftovers. You know, yeah. the bread's going stale, so let's make French toast. You know, and then normal household comfort foods become really really expensive over time and more and more foo-foo yeah okay so yeah. i am trying to elevate spam and roadkill or meat surprise because you meat never know surprise. when you got what you're going to find laying around yeah uh, to a whole new level nice okay i i am Mostly grinding them and then shaping them into interesting shapes. Yep. Okay, so you can you can eat a spam and roadkill gumby. Nice, you know, a, a, a grimace. Let you me know, ask you, a... Megilla Gorilla. Nice. Let me ask you a question. What's your chef catchphrase? Because every chef has the catchphrase, like you said. Uh, Emerald had bam. Anthony Bourdain yes. had oh, good grief. Yes. Um, my favorite was Mario Batali. His catchphrase was slap nuts. <laughs> and then he'd hit you with a guitar. That was weird. I I go with this probably won't kill you. Nice. That's a good chef catchphrase. I like that. You know, so, so that... You, you, you're cooking, you know, and you reach over and maybe you're grabbing the chives. Maybe you're grabbing the comet. You don't know, but this probably won't kill you. Yeah. I, it, I, uh, I think that more uh, chefs should say that, just, if anything, as a comfort, you know? Just to make you feel a little bit better. A- and the second Might not fact... not be bad for doctors either. Yeah. He, he, right? And the second fact about me is that I'm a, a lover of history. I love it. 
But I'm also a storyteller. So what we do at this section of the podcast is I take a story from the history books, maybe one that people don't know too well, and reword it via my own special, unique storytelling style. And that's what this is. Another educationally, uneducational installment of Steve's Historic Approximations. Dun, 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 dun. Or Shap, as I like to call it, repeatedly, annoyingly, whether anyone wants me to or not. Now, personally, I like the name Shap. It's nice and easy. That's my style. Anywho, today on the old Shappity Shap Shap, we will be talking about one of the absolute craziest, most batshit insane things that the Walt Disney Company has ever done. And this is something that people here in America really have no clue that it even happened. This is a really good chap, and I really like it. Uh, and no, I am not talking about the one time when Disney tried to copyright a Mexican holiday. <laughs> but while we're on the subject, let's stop the chap for a wee bit, because I do want to talk about this. Okay, so there's a holiday. Dia de los Muertos. Yes. Or Day of the Dead. It's a holiday in Mexico that's dedicated to remembering people in your life that have died. Very Catholic, Latin American ritual thing. Latin American holiday. It's hard to explain to gringos like you, Bunny, you I've, white devil. I've seen Coco. <laughs> yeah. But in uh, Latino culture, death isn't entirely sad. And when you die, you're not just a rotting corpse. So, yeah, anywho. Disney and Pixar started pre-production on their film Coco in 2011. And in 2013, the Disney Corporation said, uh, hey, let's copyright a Mexican fucking holiday so we can be the only one selling merchandise for it. So yeah, Disney tried to trademark Dia de los Muertos. This major corporation tried to copyright a holiday away from Mexico. What the fuck? Three caballeros my ass, Disney. Yeah. Fuck. <coughs> Have you ever been to Bahia? Have you ever been to Bahia, Bunny? I was explaining the three caballeros to Eleanor the other day, my six-year-old. And it, it's so difficult to explain that movie to someone who hasn't seen it. Okay, so Donald Duck has two cousins. One's from Brazil and one's from Mexico. Yeah. One of them is constantly smoking a cigar and the other one has guns that he's just randomly shooting in the air. He also has a magic carpet that flies. Uh, and for whatever reason, Donald wants nothing more than to get laid. With a with live action human women, yes, the weirdest freaking movie. Eleanor's like, I I can't believe that they made a Donald Duck movie for adults, and I'm like, no, 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 this is a kids film. It's the weirdest thing, and it's like, oh, let let's let me take you on a tour of Mexican culture, and by Mexican culture, I just mean I'm going to take you to cities and show you the dances they do. Because it's the 40s, and dances is all anyone knows. Let me teach you dances, and now let's try and get our beaks wet. Weird-ass movie. So, oh, fuck you, Disney. Fuck you, Disney. Um, this brings us to a very difficult position. We talked a little bit about it during the monologue in the beginning. But, uh, I'll, I'll, so, Bunny and I are... In the words of someone who left us, who left us a scathing uh, Apple Podcast review, we are left leaning trash. Yes. Uh, the Pope on film, left leaning trash. Wink, wink noise. So, all of us left leaning trash out there are now in a position. Uh, because the Walt, it, it, we're in a difficult position because the Walt Disney Corporation is just that a soulless, heartless, 
corporation with one purpose in mind, and that's to make as much money as they can off of people who, if they were on fire, the Disney executives wouldn't spit on them to put the fire out. That's, yes. you know, Disney is just a heartless conglomerate. You know, it's ah. it's horrible. But as a left leaning liberal, we all kind of have to defend Disney now. Because it's difficult because it's well, like, but, oh, but Disney, Disney is really like <clears throat> a microcosm of Hollywood itself. OK, yeah. when it comes to the money. When it comes to the business aspect of Disney making movies, anything like that, yes, evil fucking company. Yeah. It's an evil But when it comes down perfect. to the actual artists, that's where things get a little different. Yeah. But, you know, it's it's... It's difficult because, oh, uh, so uh, a liberal shows up and then a conservative comes up and they're both angry. They're both angry and they're both staring off a liberal and a conservative right next to each other. And the liberal looks at the conservative and says, what are you pissed off about? And the conservative says, I'm pissed off at the Walt Disney Corporation. And then the liberal says, I'm pissed off at the uh, Walt Disney Corporation, too. And the Repub the conservative says, yeah, I'm pissed off at them. Because they're an evil, heartless, soulless corporation that's just out there to make money. They keep raising the prices of their theme parks, making sure that nor normal, average, working class Joes like me can't afford to take their family there. It, 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 I, I hate the Disney Corporation. And the liberal goes, wow, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Wow, we have a lot of like, yeah, I hate that Disney Corporation. And also, they're turning all kids into pedophilic trans monsters. Probably because of, probably because of the, uh, the, the lizard people alien that came here and started forcing people to eat babies in their underground caves of this flat earth. You know, and it's like, oh, yeah, I forgot. Uh, we seem to hate this company for different reasons. Yes. But we and all agree. Your one reasons thing. just drove off the fucking cliff. Yeah. Uh, so, OK. Uh, so here's the thing. Um, there, the brainwashed, angry, fake Christian right out there. Uh, are 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 convinced that Disney is full of groomers and that they're grooming kids. That that's uh that's what they say. Oh, they're groomers. They're grooming kids. It's part of a strategy that the Republicans do and they do really well where it's like what I am saying is right. Oh, you disagree with me? Okay. Child fucker. And and and, and that's it. Like there's no comeback from that yeah just just what i'm saying is right and if you disagree with me okay then you're a satanic evil brainwashed agent of satan and you uh love grooming kids and eating kids and you're a liar and why are you in league with satan you grooming pedophilic child rapist and it's like okay we, fuck you it's difficult to to argue with that you know that like we're right anyone who isn't is, is, is loves she loves to fuck kids that's basically what they're doing they have no proof of this but this is where uh this chap takes a bit of a difficult turn because uh no disney is not grooming kids but they did one time but not in the way that Republicans think they did. And that's what this chap is about. The one time that Disney, yeah, they were actually fucking grooming kids. But it has nothing to do with gay or trans people, okay? There's nothing to do with sex at all. But, right, right. I mean, I mean, like, like, a lot of what Disney does 
wouldn't you kind of consider it grooming? Like the whole Mickey Mouse Club, Britney Spears, for Christ's sakes. Yeah. Uh, Kurt Russell, Tommy Kirk. Tommy Kirk. Isn't, isn't that, I mean, they're grooming them to be Disney puppets, but it's, it's still like grooming. All I know is that the greatest Beach Boys song ever written is the theme song for the Annette Funicello movie, Monkey's Uncle. Yeah. The Annette Funicello Disney film, Monkey's Uncle, where Annette Funicello was backed up by the Beach Boys. Best Beach Boys song of all time, yeah, hands right. down. Um, I mean, they're grooming di- them to be, to be stars, but like stars consumers. in that Disney mold. Consumer groomers. Yeah. Consumer groomers. That's what Disney is. I believe that's just the basis for marketing. Yeah. We're all being groomed by marketing and by advertising and shit like that. You know? Yeah. So, I mean... But this is a difficult shap to do because if anyone says Disney and groomers in the same sentence, then odds are that person is an angry, bitter, white Republican who just wants to go back to the good old days where they could be openly bigoted without fear of repercussions. Uh, fuck you. Disney isn't grooming kids for the gays. Disney, Disney is grooming kids for the money, but not for yes. gays and trans people. Yes. And, and uh, <coughs> entertainment <coughs> mirrors real life. That's a fact. Here's another fact. Gay and trans people exist. So Disney simply showing two women in love and kissing or a trans man buying tampons, that's not grooming. It's just showing real life and gay people exist. That's not grooming, you fuck. You know? Well, it is because it's not the Christian way. So anything that goes against my Bible and my belief that my pastor forces down my throat every day with his fucked up rhetoric, you know. Yeah. Evil. Um, But Disney did groom kids once, and that's what this story is about. It No, it did not happen in America, and no, it has nothing to do with gay people and trans people. And just to be clear, if any Republicans are watching, number one, hi, what the, what are you? How in the world did you get here? Are Number you lost? two, <laughs> yeah. Do you need help, Grandpa? Number two, fuck you. And number three, uh, the only reason you hate trans people so much right now is because it's an election year and the GOP couldn't find a caravan of illegals to blame everything on. Yeah. Just to be clear. Uh, uh, so the rich white politicians that have brainwashed you went with trans people this time around. Uh, uh, F you for real. Anyway, Disney. Okay, so here's the chef. Uh, Disney's making a bunch of money with the theme parks. There's Disneyland. There's Disney World. Disney World is created in such a way where you are at the park. Okay, you want to get some food? You want to spend some money doing some things? Okay, well, here is this big, massive complex that is difficult to get out of. The the thing that I love about Disneyland is, you know, Natasha and I would go to Disney. Tom and I would go to Disney, and we'd spend the day there, and it's like, oh, we want to get food. Okay, well, we can spend a ridiculous amount here at Disneyland and get food. Or we just cross that street right there, and there's a fucking McDonald's. Nice. Just cross that street, literally five minutes away from the entrance. There's a freaking McDonald's. You can just go there or down there is a Denny's. Uh, It's still a a bit expensive, but not as expensive as like 95% of the restaurants at fucking Disneyland, you know? So it's like, just go there, just get food. Disney World is set up in such a way where it's like, hey, you're in this park. Are you hungry? Now we've got you right where we want you. Because It'll be like 20 minutes drive just to get out of this park to get cheap food somewhere else. So uh, it, it, the theme parks were a moneymaker. So they were a, a cash cow, 
you've got Disneyland and then Disney World, and they keep adding more parks to Disney World and more uh, hotels and stuff like that that they own, and it's this big, massive thing. And then they did Euro Disney, which was a failure in the beginning, but it, it, it's still there, and it, 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 it eventually you know, did become like a, a cash cow for them, and they did a Tokyo Disneyland, which was another bit of a hit. And so they, they were like, where can we open our next Disney theme park? And that's when they focused on the big cash cow, China. Because how many people are in China? Like a tragillion yeah. people in China. And so it, over the last few decades, not just America, but so many other countries are like, well, China is a communist country, and uh, they don't really have like a free press, and the government controls what is being taught, and uh, the people are really oppressed. But if we treat them nicely, they will give us money. Yes. So, and, and, and it's really difficult. And especially here in America. And so Disney is like, okay, I've got an idea. This is crazy, but hear me out. Shanghai Disney. We tap into that Chinese market. So they do tests and, and uh, there's a problem with opening up Shanghai Disney. And it's the fact that this isn't a, a Western country. It, it's a, uh, a communist country and it's un under very strict rule and they have rules about what content can come into the country and what content can come out of the country and so the children in china they were not raised on disney oh like i swear I, when l when maxwell was born i don't know when it happened but he just was born knowing Mickey, Donald, Minnie, Goofy, Pluto. He he was just it, yes. just, it was just in his brain, you know, because because the Disney brand is sort of everywhere, especially for young children. That you're it, here, you're just sort of born with those characters. But in China, you, like you show them a picture of Goofy, they won't know what the hell that is. Like, what is this? I don't know Tron. And it was like years, years. As a kid, I remember knowing Mickey Mouse and knowing Donald Duck and, and like, never actually seeing them in a cartoon. Yeah. Yeah. They were just sort of everywhere. They were just yeah. sort of all over the place. Yeah. So. It's like, okay, so we can't, if we open Shanghai Disney, that would make a ton of money. But first, we have to teach Chinese people about Disney. It's like, okay, well, let's just open up a uh, Disney channel in China. Well, they control the TV, they control the media, they control what you see. You can't just open up a cable channel in China. So they're trying to figure out a way around it. The government won't allow the Disney Channel. They won't allow American movies. If we opened a theme park in China, that would be huge. But how do we get people to know the brand? In 2008, they found the way. And it's really fucked up. Okay. It is really fucked up. In 2008, in China, Disney started opening schools. Okay. They were known as Disney English. Okay. Schools in, uh, whose main intention was teaching children how to speak English. And that was big money in, uh, in, like, 2005 and 2008 uh schools were big money 
uh, it was a billion dollar market in China. Learning, it, it, opening up a school that taught people how to speak English was a billion dollar industry in China. If you wanted to make some quick, easy money, you just had to open up a school and start teaching English. It was gangbusters. And so, oh, Disney is coming into China as it, 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 in the spirit of uh, goodwill and friendship to teach our brothers and sisters in, in the East the language of English. There's no ulterior motive here. We're just trying to help you people out. If you want to learn English, hey, we'll get the best teachers from all over America to come here and to teach you English. Here, we have this, this uh, textbook right here. Why don't you read uh, this textbook? Here, here is a math problem to help you learn English. Luke Skywalker has five apples. Minnie Mouse has 10 apples, and they use these English schools to get in at a very young age with children to teach them about their Disney character. They That's were so grooming kids. Up. It is really fucked up. Here, I've, I, I got a, a couple of articles. Uh... Disney basically said, well, okay, we don't have decades of movies to do this with, and they weren't allowed by the Chinese government to get a Disney Channel onto Chinese airwaves. So what they decided to do was launch a string of schools called Disney English, which would teach young Chinese children English using Disney characters. Uh, Mickey wants an apple. Luke Skywalker is 30 years old. I walked by one of these schools when I was there, and I remember that Toy Story 4 was coming out that week, and all of the teachers were wearing Toy Story 4 t-shirts. So it was a school that doubled as a really effective marketing tool, marketing towards kids. Not only did they learn English that their parents wanted them to speak, but they left with an affection for these Disney characters that they had been introduced to, which led to the very successful opening of Shanghai Disney in 2010. At one point, they were hoping to open uh, 250 Disney English uh, schools throughout china isn't that insane it is fucked up too they were actually grooming kids yeah in china it had nothing to do with gays it had to do with uh branding here's another article i found uh, uh disney is starting years earlier brainwashing chinese children and cultivating them as potential clients in a very indirect yet penetrating <laughs> fashion. What Disney is doing now in China is growing a future consumer base. Being surrounded by Disney products and characters, it's impossible for parents and their children in China not to love Disney. And that preceded the development of the Shanghai Disney Park. They wanted to open a Disney wanted to open a theme park to make money. They realized that the uh, the country didn't know Disney. So they opened up schools for the specific purpose of brainwashing children and parents into liking their corporation. Yeah. That sounds really fucked up. It is fucked up. And I'm I'm also I'm also really thinking like like okay okay, you want to what you want to you want to start a a Disney Channel here? No, no, we just can't let you do. Hey, how about a school? <laughs> That is so weird. You, you, you think maybe you could do a school? <laughs> That's so weird. And I don't think a lot of people know this, but this is a thing. It, it happened. It's a fact. Disney opened a series of schools. That's creepy. That's the future that Republicans want. And it would either work or fail miserably depending on the kids yeah and it succeeded and a it succeeded in the in the sense that they were able to open shanghai disney it was really popular because of their chain of uh indoctrinating schools around china and they made a ton of money and to show how 
unserious they were in uh, 2020 because of the pandemic, or was it 2021, 2020 or 2021? Sometime during the pandemic, they shut down all of the schools. Oh. They were like, oh, coronavirus, can't do it anymore. Still, have fun at Shanghai Disney. Bye. <laughs> so they used uh, uh, English language schools in order to sneakily gain a foothold into the country. That is really fucked up. That is. And you could see how it works. I mean, if you're if yeah. you're inundated with Disney characters just all day, all through a school day. Yeah. That's fucked up. It is. It is messed up. And it, it, liberals are in this difficult position where it's like, oh, man, this light year movie. It looks dumb. I don't want to go see that. Oh, what? Uh, two gay women kiss in it, and now Republicans are boycotting the movie? Well, shit, I guess I gotta fucking spend money on light year now. <laughs> Thanks. I gotta go watch this hour and 50 minute it was I not. Know. It wasn't See, a good movie. I, I, I good don't. Movie. I don't play that. Lightyear was a stupid fucking idea from the beginning. It was. So what? It, it it doesn't make it better or worse or anything that there's a brief lesbian kiss in it. It's yeah. just really annoying that that uh. Like they'll hate something, but it's like Christ, can you can you hate it for the right reason? Yeah. Like can't it just be a shitty movie? Yeah, and then Lightyear bombed and Republicans are like, ha, ah, get woke, go broke. That's what you get for forcing your woke ideologies onto you. And it's like, no, Lightyear didn't fail because oh, uh the people who hate cancel culture tried to are trying to cancel Disney. It didn't Succeed because the movie just sucked. Yeah, it just sucked. it was a stupid concept. Yeah, ridiculous. You know, I mean, ah, uh. yeah. So that's Shap this week. Disney was grooming. It had nothing to do with gays or trans people. I can't wait for it to not they be an election had, year. They could have had. A light year universe, all of its own, but they step too far. Yeah, you know. Okay, so Buzz Lightyear is now a real spaceman flying around. So how does Andy know about this spaceman flying around that he wants its toy? And how do the toy manufacturers know to make a toy about this spaceman? Because it explains it in a in a little uh, opening bit of text in the beginning of the movie that the movie Lightyear is actually a movie that came out in the 90s that a young Andy saw and then went to the store to buy the toy loosely based on the movie. And it's like, why do you have such a convoluted plot for yeah. cartoons about toys? I mean, they could have made it about a movie. I mean, that would be fair. You would know from the marketing. But, like, don't just give us the movie. Show us you making that movie. Show it, you know. Show, yeah. show it. Show. And that's why I say a universe, because we could have Buzz Lightyear there. We could have Buzz Lightyear the TV show. We could have Bud Lightyear, uh, Buzz Lightyear the radio show, because we don't know how far back he goes as a character. You accidentally said Bud Lightyear, and I yeah. want to take just a second of time before we get cut off by Zoom to talk about uh, Rick and Morty's dominance in the world of uh, marijuana paraphernalia. Okay. A lot of bongs, a lot of... Uh, so I was trying to think, 
what other animated characters could replace Rick and Morty as good things to see on like bongs and and uh, pipes and stuff like that? So I was trying to think of like, OK, other than Rick and Morty, what other cartoons could you get to be on weed stuff? And the only one that I could think of that I think is perfect. Garfield. Garfield. Because he's lazy. All he all he wants to do is like sleep and he has the munchies all the time. Like it makes sense. Yes. If I was gonna get like a bong and there was a bong with Rick and Morty on it, and there was a bong with fucking Garfield, I'd buy ten of those. <laughs> And the Rick and Morty bongs that you're selling are already like a like a illegal bootleg Rick and Morty bongs. Fuck it, start putting Garfield on there. Yeah. Shit, I'd buy the hell out of that. Yeah. We definitely a... have to go with the with the uh Bloom County characters. Oh, that's another good one. They need to be yeah, on Build the Cat. Yes. Oh man, that's such a good idea. Bill the Cat oh. was made for a bong. I want a bong and it just says cow tools on it. Yes. That's what I want. Cow tools. Man. That's another good one. Kathy. I just want Kathy. Yes. No, Ziggy. I want a, I want Ziggy pipes. Ziggy. Ziggy. Ziggy uh, uh, rolling uh, plates. He's, he's pretty much been forgotten by history. He has. He has. Ziggy, a... it's weird, because Ziggy in that second was all over the fucking place. Everywhere. Everywhere. He had a Christmas special. Cups and calendars and placemats and notebooks and trapper yeah. keepers. You can get fucking D Ziggy on goddamn anything. Yeah, that was back when comic strips had merchandise. Yes, I remember seeing Bill the Cat dolls. I didn't have a Bill the Cat doll, but I did have an Opus doll. But I really think that Ziggy is the last performer to have died because of the talkie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because he was yeah. this completely silent character. Yeah, he had a Christmas special where he didn't say a single word. And then he was fucking gone. Yeah. No, Bunny. Ziggy was taken to a nice farm upstate <laughs> where there were a bunch of other Ziggies there and he can just run and play. It's fun. Uh, it Ziggy is there along with uh, the cast of BC and the Wizard of Id. Yes. They're all there. Beetle Bailey is there. <laughs> Snuffy uh, Smith. Snuffy Smith. Yeah. So much fun. So that's it for this week's Steve Historical Approximations. Be sure and join us next week for more educationally uneducational fun with Steve's Historic Approximations. And cut on that. Bunny, unfortunately.